The land explored by our ancestors extends from Altai to the White Sea. The scientific expedition Trails of Nomads continues to unveil the path of our forefathers. Its leader is a true citizen of the world. He believes, without a deep understanding of the past, there is no future. Each journey is focused on a detailed study of history and culture. Pilgrim of the 21st century, Zapari Skakov, with a team of scientists, has already visited more than 50 countries. Scientists reveal the exciting secrets of the past. Watch an amazing story of a great journey in the Trails of Nomads program. Today's Trails of Nomads episode presents Trails of Nomads scientific expedition reached Jordan. What buildings erected by Baybaris are in the Al Karak fortress? Was sugar beet grown and processed during Mamluk's reign? Origin of the Mansaf meal and what is its similarity with the Kazakh Nariz Koje? Kipchak sultans who became the defenders of Islam left a big trace in the history of the Hashemite kingdom of Jordan. The benefits of the Mamluk rulers' work reached this day. One example is the symbol of the armed forces of this country, a saber. This is the weapon of the Kipchaks. The Muslim army in Egypt and Syria began to use such a saber with a curved blade under the Mamluks. This is confirmed by Arab researchers. Thanks to such weapons, the Kipchak sultans fought back the Mongol invaders and crusaders, established peace and stability in the Arab countries. Military fortresses that provided the security of the state in ancient times served to the country and people nowadays. Of course, in troubled times, they were destroyed. But even now, they bring considerable income to the treasury as tourist attractions. A vivid example are Ajlun and Al Karak fortresses in Jordan. The participants of the scientific expedition Trails of Nomads learned about the history of these fortifications and their connection with the Kipchak Sultans. In 1260, as we know from history, after the Battle of Ain Jalut defeating the Mongol army, Baybaris became a sultan and ascended the throne. The main goal then was to ensure the security of the country and protect it from enemies. For this, new fortresses were built, and the old ones underwent a major overhaul. One of these fortifications is Al Karak. <laughs> Al Karak Fortress is located in the west of Jordan, 140 kilometers from the capital city of Amman, at an altitude of 1,000 meters above sea level. One can enjoy a great view from the top of the fortress. From here, guards control the movement of nomadic Bedouins, trade caravans following the Damascus and Cairo pilgrimage routes to Mecca. If you look south, you can see the Dead Sea. Behind it is Jerusalem. Al Karak played an important role in the battles for this fertile land. Al Karak, Bull Christianos Larden Salan Hamala, Berman Burgess, Kerke Kinshil Bastal, Berman Burgess, Alps Prince Monocolus of the King. Al Karak Fortress was built by the Crusaders. Construction was initiated in 1142 and completed in 1161. For a long time, no one could capture this fortress, including Salah ad Din. However, in 1188, 1189, the fortress was voluntarily surrendered to Salah ad Din. At that time, his army was very powerful. The Crusader army, on the contrary, experienced hardships. So the fortress was transferred to the Ayyub dynasty. In 1263, the fortress passed under the authority of Sultan Baybars, who carried out serious repairs. Sultan Baybars planned to make the Al Karak fortress his residence. For this purpose, he erected the walls of the city and the fortress on the hill. This fortification was so strong that even enemy artillery could not cope with it. Another historical site erected during Sultan Baybars is the Mamluk Palace. It simultaneously combined solemnity and reliability. This was part of the administrative district. At the end of the 19th century, during the rule of the Turks, the Mamluk Palace was used as a prison. In 
Мына крестоносцлардың да бұл қамалды салғандағы өлдегі мақсаты олар үшін Building this fortress, the Crusaders wanted to ensure security from the south, since Jerusalem was a holy city for them. Al Karak Fortress served as the shield. This is a strategically important defensive structure. It was also used by the Mamluks because this fortification protected not only Jerusalem but all of Syria from the south. And here is the tower behind me, which was built by order of Sultan Baybaris. There are three towers built by Al-Zahir Baybars. These are Burj Al-Zahir, Burj Al-Banawi and Burj Al-Saub. The largest is located in the northwestern part of the fortress and looks like a chess piece. This is the tower Burj Al-Zahir. It looks like the Burj Al-Banawi tower on the southeastern side. At the entrance, a lion is depicted, a sign of the Sultan Baybars. In the upper part, there is an inscription about Baybars. The third tower, Burj al Saup, is located in its eastern part. Its architectural style is special. All three towers were damaged during the 1293 earthquake. Under Sultan Baybars, the gates of Al Karak Fortress were changed. They have become even more durable. Also, a library was opened by the decree of the Sultan. Of all the fortresses and defensive fortifications built by Sultan Az Zahir Baybars, the most reliable and impregnable fortress was Al Karak. Thanks to this construction, the power of the army was strengthened. There was an opportunity to control security throughout Syria and resist the Mongol raids and aggressive campaigns of the Crusaders. In addition, the standard of living of the population around the fortress improved and conditions for education appeared. Al Karak was not the palace from which control was carried out, but the place where the perpetrators were sent. The eighth ruler of the Ayyubi dynasty, Al Salih Najm ad Din, came into conflict with his brother Al Adil. As a punishment, he was sent to Al Karak. At that time, his assistant, subsequently the first ruler of Kipchak origin in the history of Egypt, Shajar al Dur, was next to him. The leader of the personal guard was Az Zahir Baybaris. This fortress also occupied a special place in the lives of the sons of Sultan Baybaris, Berkehan, and Salamish. <laughs> In 1277, after the death of Sultan Baybars, his eldest son, Berkehan, replaced him. But at that time he was still young, therefore he stayed on the throne only two years. The Mamluks forced him to voluntarily give up the throne. As a sign of respect to the memory of Sultan Baybars, the place of the ruler was taken by his second son, Salamish. But Salamish was very young too. He was on the throne for only three months. Again, the Mamluks gathered for advice. Kalawan was among them. This time it was decided to remove Salamish from the throne. According to the Mamluks, a child cannot have the state, as the authority of the country may be undermined. As a result, both sons of Babers were sent to the fortress. <laughs> When the son of Sultan Baybaris, Berkihan, left the throne, he got the post of Emir of Al Karak. There is evidence that he died here. Also, according to some reports, the sons of Kalawun spent their young years in this fortress. Thus, Al Karak was important for the Kipchak sultans. In 1299, Al Nasir Muhammad, the son of Kalawan, because of his youth, was also removed from the throne and sent to this fortress, but later he would again become a sultan. This fortress has its own characteristics. It is located on the outskirts of the south. If one intended to gather an army here and raid Cairo, then this place was too far. 
Therefore, the fortress had two main purposes. The first was the defense of the state from the south. The second, it served as a temporary exile for some sultans in the case of a struggle for the throne. The famous traveler Ibn Battut, during his pilgrimage to Mecca and Medina, made a stop at Al Karak. He was struck by the impregnability of the fortress. The scientist wrote about this in his manuscript in 1326. At this time, the Mamluk state was headed by the son of Kalawun, Sultan al Nasser Muhammad. Under him, construction was developed. Majestic palaces, madrasas, and hospitals were erected. However, determining their exact location is still difficult. The palace was supposedly located on the territory of the fortress. Because al Nasser Muhammad used al Karak as a residence to establish close contacts with the Bedouins. The Kipchak sultans were born in the Dasht Kipchak steppe. In troubled times, having been captured, they were sold into slavery. They did not break, but rather strengthened and hardened and showed the best qualities. They managed to create a new state, the state of the Mamluks, and made it one of the best. They were able to stop the conquerors threatening the whole world, the Mongols and Crusaders. They were able to develop their politics, economy, culture, education and science. al Karak Fortress, its buildings and structures, architecture are a good example demonstrating the advancement of the state. In the era of Sultan Baybaris and other Kipchak sultans, al Karak Fortress became even more fortified and significant. At this time, there was a rapid pace of construction. The buildings of civil, military, religious purposes were erected. As a result, the fortress began to play an important role in the politics of the entire Middle East and turned into a kind of center of Jordan and entire Mamluk state later. In 1342, the grandson of Al-Mansur Kalawan, the son of Al-Nasir Muhammad, Al-Nasir Ahmad took power into his own hands. He ruled the country not from his palace but from the al Karak fortress. He believed he was safe there. al Karak fortress played an important role in the history of the Kipchak sultans. This fortress now, in fact, has become a tourist center. People come mostly from Europe and other Arab countries. We have come from Kazakhstan. Our goal is to follow traces of our ancestors, to study the legacy that they left. That is, thanks to our work, the scientists who come after us will already know where and in what directions carry out research. Now we go down. There is a museum dedicated to this fortress. It has a lot of exhibits. Al Karak Archaeological Museum has been operating since 1980. It consists of two parts. One is located in the western part, the other, the main one, in the basement of the fortress. In the Mamluk era, this place was used for military purposes. Most of its exhibits were found in the cities of al Karak and Tafila. Weapons, household items, clothes, jewelry, clay dishes, all these artifacts prove the influence of the Kipchak sultans on Muslim culture. Under the Mamluks, manufacturing developed in Jordan. This was told by scientists at Yarmouk University. During the research work in Jordan, Trails of Nomads expedition participants met with well-known scholars who study the history of the Mamluks. They shared available information. 
During the reign of the Kipchak sultans, the leading branches of the economy rapidly developed. For example, in Jordan, sugar beets were grown and sugar was produced. These plantations have survived to the present day. And now people grow crops, fruits and berries, vegetables. Today this place is called Agwar. This type of Mamluk economy can be found in other Arab countries. According to Jordanian researchers, the rule of law was paramount and it ensured the successful administration of the Kipchak sultans. Once Sultan Beber is seeing soldiers on horseback riding around the crop told them, to protect Muslims from tyrants, I go on campaigns, you also harm a Muslim. So the culprits were punished. Is this not an example of justice and culture of a ruler? The Kipchak sultans have managed to build a just and cultural society. For example, in the time of the Mamluks, a culture of wearing clothes was developed. Speaking of justice, the Kipchak sultans informed the citizens about all state affairs. Information was announced from the minaret of the mosque or through the streets. The territory of the Mamluks is so huge that if a kulan skips over it, it will erase its hooves and if a bird flies, then it will weaken. Therefore, to maintain unity and harmony in the state, it was necessary to be in constant contact with every corner of it. At the same time, efficiency is important. Kipchak sultans provided it with the help of their fast horses. Under Sultan Beboras, the barrack postal system was introduced. Specially selected messengers changing horses at roadside stations could deliver the necessary information anywhere in the country within four days. Sultan Beboras also traveled the entire territory of his state to find out the true situation of the people. Jordanian historians confirm the fact. We read a lot about Sultan Beberus at school. He's really a legend. For the good of his people and land, he was ready to do everything. Sometimes he secretly went to Damascus from Egypt. He took only a few reliable assistants with him. Each of them took a pair of horses. They could ride without stopping, occasionally changing horses. So Sultan Beberus suddenly appeared anywhere in the country. This really surprised his people, therefore, he was well aware of the state of affairs. He controlled everything. As in other Arab countries, Jordanians appreciate the merits and contribution of the Kipchak sultans to the development of the country. They call the period of their reign the Golden Era. Therefore, everyone respects these outstanding personalities. Scientists of the leading Yarmouk University in Jordan are particularly interested in studying the history of the Mamluks. Jordan has been influenced by many peoples and civilizations. The Mamluks, or rather the Kipchak sultans, had a particularly strong influence. This is evidenced by various historical monuments. Kipchak sultans ensured political and economic stability. The standard of living has improved. People began to imitate the Kipchak sultans following their customs and traditions, speaking their native language. There is a small city around the Al Karak fortress. The most popular meal here is mansaf. It is very similar to the Kazakh Nauru's koje. In general, for Arabic cuisine, such a similarity is uncharacteristic. But mansaf is an exception. It appeared in Al Karak during the reign of Sultan Beybaris. Now people continue to cook it. This is also a kind of one of the small contributions of the Kipchak sultans to the Jordanian culture.
Ancestral home of the Mamluks laid by Sultan Babarus is the current Kazakh steppe. I'm very glad that you do not forget about your ancestors. You have come to us looking for roots. Your research will help write an adequate history that is necessary for future generations. Moreover, this will further contribute to the development of relations between Kazakhstan and Jordan. The legacy of the Kipchak sultans shows the level of development of that time. On horseback they created and connected civilizations. The descendants of the Great Turks also made a significant contribution to the development of the Arab states including Jordan. This is evidenced by the historical monuments of Ajlun Fortress. The next stop of the Trails of Nomad scientific expedition members is the Aljun Fortress.